Okay. So, really hope this is the right one. Yes, lesson 11. Woohoo! Okay. Now, of course, it'll be on the front one and then it'll go to the bottom just to be annoying. Oh, maybe not today. Hmm. We'll see. All right. Here are our learning targets. Again, four of them. We'll see how far we get. First one. I can include my sources on my informative essay about my freaky frog. So once we have gotten our essay, and I will go over again how to get that onto your slide. Once that you have had that opportunity to get that on there, we have to use our um, sources. Because remember, one of the things we learned about was what do experts do? Experts learn about a topic, right? And become very knowledgeable about it. Building our expertise either comes from hands-on work or comes from learning things, Mr. Nixon, eyes up here, or learning from different sources, right? And if we are the expert and we are sharing our information with other people, we can't pretend that we were the ones who came up with it, right? We have to make sure that we show who we got the information from. So it's really important today that once we get our essay on there, I will show you, I have a slide that um, shows you what to go ahead and type in there, but you're gonna not type it on your on the painted essay, which with all the colors, you're gonna type it in on your, just on your slide after we paste it. All right, today we are, once we have finished that and gotten all of our items inside, so if you are a person who is still getting your adaptations on there and your essay and your pork claw, we'll get that worked out. Then we are going to start working on our Freaky Frog trading card. So if you are somebody who is in person, I will be handing back these back out to you. So um, they were your paint, you did them in art. Um, so my friends at home, some of you did them, some of you did not, but you're gonna have your, I will show you your opportunity with how you're gonna do yours on the book, um, the virtual book, so no worries. So I have glued them to a card the card has lines on it. You're going to be out adding some more things to it. So I'm just letting you know that that's um, happened well without your needing to even do anything. All right, so we're going to get to those. We're going to do some planning actually in our workbook. So you definitely need your EL workbook nearby because there's a page that you're going to do um, some planning before you write it on your official card. All right, but today we're going to, you already have your Freaky Frog picture. At least my friends in, in um, person and some of you at home may have as well. And But a scientific drawing has labels. So we're going to add some labels today. We're also going to think about what are the most important facts about your frog that someone's going to need to know? What's the most important stuff? So we're going to be writing those down. We're also going to be coming up with our scoring system. How many points does your particular frog earn depending on some certain categories? So I know that some, a lot of you are into like the Pokemon cards, right? And the Pokemon cards have certain different abilities, right? And the things that when you're playing a game, they can um, attack or overcome some of the other Pokemon, right? So we are gonna come over sort of the game idea, the trading card has a little bit to do with in certain areas, how does your frog score? And if you were playing a game against another frog, how would your score compare to the other frog's score? Okay, so I'll go over and explain that a little bit more when we get to there. That might end up being tomorrow by the time we get done. We'll see. So if you remember, our whole performance task had to do with being able to come up with a freaky frog trading card and also to form a book. Why is everything so slow today? This is driving me absolutely bonkers today. Okay, so your performance task is obviously to make this virtual book. On Friday, you're going to share that book with other third graders as well as some adults. All right, they're going to zoom in. We're going to have some Zoom groups. You're going to have the ability to share your screen and share your book. You won't be able to read all of your things. You're going to choose and pick and choose a little bit, but you are going to be able to share their, your pourquoi, be able to share your adaptations, be able to share your essay and also to be able to share your training card. And if you're um, one of my remote friends, it's all going to be virtual and I'll show you that page is part of your slideshow. And you're going to be able to show that with other to the other people on Friday. 
All right, so before we can move on to the trading card, we have to make sure we are finished with getting everything in our book and getting our sources down. So first of all, most of us yesterday got the copying our pourquoi into our Freaky Frog book. Many of us, oh, hi, Sunny. You're not there, you're here. There you go. Um, so in, in person, um, so you will, and so a lot of you now are on the copying the adaptations. You do that the same way. You're just going to pull up that um, document and copy and paste. Now the essay is a little bit different because it, the essay isn't all in one piece. So I'm going to show you how you take that, um, how you take that essay and put it into your slideshow. All right, so remember it had different sections, okay? So you can't, some of you tried yesterday and found out that it doesn't work. You can't just copy all of it at once. You have to take each individual box and add it to your slide. So I'm gonna to go to the bottom. I find it's much easier if you put your cursor at the bottom of the, of the information. And see, oh, see how it did that? We do not want it to look like that. We do not want it to look like we don't want to, we only want to copy the words. Okay. So there I'm going to get that. I'm either going to use my um, control C or whatever, or you guys have something slightly different on yours or, or you're going to go ahead and have um, uh, go up to edit and copy. So I'm going to do it this way. So you can see this way, copy. You can't see my fingers um, on my keyboard. And then I'm going to go to my freaky frog book. Now mine is already there, but I'm going to go ahead and add it. I'm going to pretend that I didn't do this already. Oh, there's my freaky for a trade card. Okay. All right. So here's my pourquoi and here's my adaptations. And now I'm going to add another slide and I'm going to make sure that I have an, I have a text box ready for it. Here's my text box ready for it. Now I'm just going to click inside that text box and now I'm going to paste edit paste. And now there it is, but I'm not done yet. That's only one part. That's only one part of that's my first paragraph. So I go back to my freaky frog there. And now I'm going to click. So I'm going to scroll down. Stick with me folks for just a little longer because I want you to see this part here. This is your focus statement. Remember your focus statement. It goes where does it go in its own paragraph? No, it is part of. So I'm going to hit control C on mine. And that because it goes in that first paragraph. So see where my cursor is blinking? I'm going to go ahead and paste it right in there. But now, now I'm done with my first paragraph. So I'm going to hit, oh, no, no. Don't do that. I'm going to go ahead and go to the next line, the skip a line before I put it in my next paragraph. Okay. So paragraph, paragraph one, right? Then I'm going to go down to my yellow and I'm gonna highlight that. Ooh, it worked this, oh, nope. See, that's why I try to go down and up because it's easier than going from top to bottom. I'm gonna go where it says edit. I'm gonna copy, go back to my slide. And now I'm going to go ahead and put it in there. Okay, so that's now my, so I have two, two paragraphs. Go back to my essay, now my blue. Blue goes all in one, copy it off. Go back to my slide, make sure that I'm on a different line so that I have different paragraphs. I'm gonna go ahead and back and paste it in. How many paragraphs should I have in my essay total? Who remembers? Four, very good. So now I'm gonna go back to my poison dart frog. I'm gonna scroll all the way down. And some of you have more than, so mine slipped onto that second page, remember? So some of you have some weird stuff where you might have a sentence on one page and a sentence on another. So you might have to copy twice, but here's all of mine. I copy it up and remember, don't highlight more than just the words. I'm gonna control C back to my page and then I'm going to insert, copy, oh, paste, sorry, there it is. Now, it's, now wait a minute, uh-oh, it doesn't fit. So what am I gonna have to do? What do you think, Elena? Well, I can make it smaller, but since it's really big, what else could I do, Miss Sunny? I could add to another slide. So I could take this right here, all those last two paragraphs, and I could go up and I could edit, and I could say cut. I could cut them off on that one, 
add another slide. Here's how I add a slide. I, it says new slide, it's got a plus. It's gonna give me another box. I'm gonna just add my text box. Click inside and now I paste. I cut it out of that one page and I paste it into another. The reason I really want to do that is because I need more room for my sources. Remember your sources? We got to get that added in there and we don't have it on our, on our painted essay. So Mrs. Harrison is going to make sure she leaves this part up while you are busy um, so that people can start getting their sources written. So here are my sources. Um, you need some different things. When you are citing a source, you need the where they came from, so the publisher. So this book doesn't have an author, but normally you'd put the author's name, but this our, our, everything you need to know about frogs and other sleeper, sleeper creatures came from several people. So you're going to put DK Publishing, then the name of the book, everything you need to know about frogs and other slippery creatures, and then you're just going to put the pages that you use. So if you are water holding frog, you're going to have different page numbers there than if you are the glass frog and so on. Now, we didn't just use one source, we used two, right? Remember that other piece of paper I gave you? So you have two sources. So I also used a paper that EL Education made, then it was the poison called the poison dart frog. Now they wrote it, so I don't really need to write anything other than that. So on this slide is basically what you're going to do here. DK Publishing, everything you need to know about frogs and other slippery creatures. And when you do this, I'm going to show you, when you actually type it, you're going to highlight it and you are going to underline it to show that it's the name of a book. Okay. So did you see how I highlighted it? And then went up to you for underline. Now, I have a line here for pages. You can just highlight that, and then you're going to put whatever pages it is. Now, Mrs. Harrison has already figured it out for you, didn't she? Look at Glass Frog. What pages does it say right next to Glass Frog? Page 3233. So you're just going to go ahead and type page 32 to 33. Now, if you're also Glass Frog, you also use this EL Education Transparent Wonder. So you're going to type EL Education, comma, and then you're going to highlight, you know, you can highlight that section part or whatever and put Transparent Wonder. Okay, this is going on the bottom of your essay, right? If you were an Amazon Horn Frog, are you listening? Then here's your page numbers that go here and your piece that you have a piece of paper it was called wow the amazon horn frog not very creative on that one were they no water holding frog same kind of thing here here are your pages here are your all about water holding frog is the name of your piece now do you, what do you notice around the title of those other pieces what do you notice mac um that um the amazon horn frog and the water holding frog Name. Okay, it has their name in it. Very good. What else do they have around it? Cole, can you see from way back there? What do you see? I think it's yep, they have quotation marks. Now, you might be wondering, why is that not underlined? Were they books? No, they were just articles. So books are underlined. Articles, short pieces of something, just have quotation marks. Now, quotation marks, if you look at your computer, quotation marks are over there by the question mark. It's, the, it's in the next row up. And you have quotation marks. You have to shift and touch the quotation marks at the same time, like you did when you were doing your pourquoise and your, your characters were talking. Okay? So this is what I need you to accomplish now before we go on to anything else. Actually, I'm going to do one more thing. because Some of you are going to get, this is quick. So... Once you have finished copying everything and getting your sources in, your table of contents, now you can actually put your page numbers in. Once you've finished getting everything on your Freaky Frog book, then you can start putting page numbers. So here's Mrs. Harrison's. It's the second slide. I've already filled out these things for you. You just have to figure out what page number in your book the pourquoise. So is the pup. So this is my this is, right here is my cover. This is actually page what? 
even though it says two here, is this really page one, right? That was really page one. So my pourquoi is then on page two. So I'm just gonna type in the number two. Now, is page three now my frog adaptations? No, it's not because I took three pages to come up with my pourquoi. So my sixth page, one, two, three, four, actually fifth page is my frog adaptation. All right, so then I put my page, oh, that was interesting. Oh boy, what is going on? There we go. There we go, page five. Then my frog essay and my glossary. If you don't want to have a glossary, you don't need one. Okay, if you, some of my friends, because we, my class got a little ahead yesterday because we had some extra time. Some of my kids decided to have glossaries, then go ahead and put that in there. If you decide you don't want the glossary, that's totally fine. You can delete the glossary slide and then just copy, just hit that and hit delete and away it goes. Yes, ma'am. Can I mention too, when you guys copy and paste your essays, it doesn't have a title. So you need to go back and- Oh, for, yes. It, it just has, because you're just copying and pasting the section. Yes, There's you need your, so if you look at Mrs. Harrison's right here, here's Mrs. Harrison's essay. I put the amazing poison dart frog. And the way that you can get that centered, remember you highlight it. And then if you go up here and you, it says a line, if you click on center right there, it will center it for you. All right, it was already, mine was already centered, but that's how you do it when you get to yours. So it doesn't, you can call it whatever you want, but it should probably have something to do with what? Your frog, since it's, uh, since your entire essay was about one type of frog, right? Okay, so I'm gonna give you some work time because I know you have some things to do. So let's review real quickly what I'm asking you to do, all right? So the th three things you need copied into your book, you need your pourquoi, which many of you are already done with. You need your frog adaptation, which some of you have done. And, some, and then you need your essay, each section, you're not gonna take too long. And then you need to put your sources. So this is the one I'm leaving up so you can see it, so you can type in what you need to at the bottom. Yes, Noah, question. It's on the bottom of your essay page because where did you get that information? You got it from these sources, right? It, it's at the bottom of your essay. Can we copy it from our, um, um, from our application? So Noah's asking, can you copy it from your other page that you wrote? So some of it's gonna be different though, isn't it? Because the adaptations, you did two different frogs, the other frog, and you have an extra source now. So if you want to copy some of it, Noah, over, smart guy, use, yeah, yeah use, your, um, use your tools, right? But you won't be able to copy all of it. Does that make sense? Okay, any other questions before I give you some work time? I don't wanna get started on the trading card until pe most people are moving on. Yes, Mrs. Oven. Remind them to take up physical and behavioral highlights. Okay, yes. When you copy and paste so when you copy and paste, yeah, and I, I decided that wasn't hugely important. Okay. I mean, if, 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 if it's okay if they have that or not, it doesn't matter. Okay. So what Mrs. Aben wants to point out, so let me show you really quickly on mine. So uh, when you copy and paste, this special, this physical and behavioral part has yellow or green, doesn't it? So, because that was from our, that was to remind us about the yellow paragraph and the blue paragraph. So the, the what you do is you just highlight it. Then you go up to this where it says highlight color. So let's see where it is. You click on it and you click on transparent because some of you have colored backgrounds. If you choose white, then you're gonna end up, gonna end up white. So you have to hit, because your background is green or something, it'll be white on top of green. So if you hit transparent, then whatever's behind, you can still see and you won't end up with a bunch of white stuff. All right? Okay, any other questions before I give you some time to work? Yes, Lennox. Um, do you have to do this for all the pages? Or? Um, what do you mean this? Uh, 
No, you just need to, you mean, I, good question. So what you, what he, what um, Lennox is asking is, do you have to put your sources on all of your pages? You've already put your source on your adaptations paragraph. So you're just adding this to your essay. So good question. Just answer, just adding this after you've copied your essay. Any other questions? My friends at home, are you feeling good? You, I'll be here if you need to answer, answer, answer any questions. Marin. No, so your sources were the book. You have to use a DK book because that's where the, the, your book is whatever, because you published your book. So yes, you need the DK off of this one because that's where you got your information. You didn't really get it from the, your publishing company, right? So yeah, so you, you, that's totally fine to have your publishing company on the back because it's your pretend book. So that's fine. Ms. Astria, thank you for being patient. Do we put the sources uh Oh, sorry. I, as usual, Mrs. Harrison does not have her sound on because at the end of the day, she was in Mrs. Aubin's room. Every day, poor Astria does this every single day, huh? All right, go for it, Astria. Try Do again. Do we put the sources on the bottom of our essay? Yes, just at the bottom of your essay. Very good. So when Mrs. Harrison went to that second page, she needed more room. Yes, Miss Ellie. You don't, um, oh, yes, you're going to want to write the word sources and the, and the colon is next to the quotation marks with the shift. That's what we call that. Yes, Ms. Madison. You don't write all of these. You just write the ones that apply to you, right? So Ms. Madison, did you do glass frog or Amazon horn frog? You were Amazon horn frog. Right? So you're going to write DK, so you're going to write sources, DK publishing everything you need to know about frogs and other slippery creatures, comma, and then if you're Amazon Horn Frog, you're going to put pages 2021, and then you're going to put EL Education, the Amazon Horn Frog. You're going to ignore all the glass frog stuff and ignore all the water holding frog stuff, unless you're water holding frog or glass frog. Yes, sir, name. Say that again. Are you typing it you're, nope, you're typing it at the bottom of your essay. But you, once you get your essay in there, this goes at the bottom of your essay. Yes, Miss Layla. It is, yes, but those are also the pages in the book. You are correct, very observant. All right, I'm gonna give you some time. Everybody, um, go ahead and pull out that computer if you haven't already, I see several of them open already. Go ahead and get started. Um, I got some um, uh, my friends. Um, I want my people in my room to get their sources written down first before they try to be helpers. All right. Thank you for waiting, both of you, until we were I was done with teaching. Bottom of the essay. Bottom of your colored painted colored essay. So you have to put your essay on the on the page first looks like this sweetie looks like this this is the paint that goes at the bottom of this page yeah
read out your information. So which one are you? Which one are you, Sawyer? Are you glass frog, Amazon, and frog or water? So you're going to write sources, DK Publishing, everything you need to know about frogs and other flipper creatures, pages 36, 37. So type that first. Mrs. Harrison? Yes, Jacqueline. I'll be right there. You're going to do this, Serena. DK Publishing, everything you need to know about frogs and other slippery creatures, pages 2021. Okay. And then you're going to type EL Education, the Amazon Home Frog. So that's, going to be, that's not going to be your email. Okay. 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 My friends, I'm sorry, I'm back. Who, who, was, who had a question? Mr. Ben, go for it. What do we do on page two? So on page two, so that's your pourquoi, right? You don't, so you don't need to do anything on your page two, it's just your pourquoi. So if, you, if, you, if I go back to mine, Okay, this is the, oh, do you mean the table of contents, Ben? Do you mean the table of contents? So on the table of contents, we're putting the page numbers of our book, where your pourquoi is and where your frog adaptations is and your frog essay. You're putting a number because everybody's is different. So I couldn't do that for you. So you look at what page each of these is and then you put your number in the table of contents um yeah uh, does that make sense jensen question how do you delete slides so you have a do you have how many slides do you have a you have all your pourquoi uh -huh. do you have your frog adaptation uh i don't know about that one you did you didn't when I checked it last night. So your frog adaptation was the paragraph that we talked about the two different frogs. So you need to get that in there before you delete anything. Can you show me? I'll show no, you it looks like do that. look at this, Jensen. There are a couple of physical adaptations that keep whatever. Oh, actually, no, that's the wrong one. Here's this one. Adaptations are a special thing about how an animal looks or acts. Does that look familiar, Jensen? Except for you need to do yours. Okay, you need to get that in there. Yes, I'm sorry. I try to do 17 people at one time, right? There you go. <laughs> hard, to, hard to be me. All right. All right. Sorry, guys. I had to help out. I brought it back. Okay.
This is Harrison. Right, I'm back. Who needed me? Ben, Kai? Um, what? I know what the table of content con table of con Good job. You get your sources typed in on your essay. On my essay? Yes. So at the bottom of your essay, the one that Mrs. Harrison copied for you, the one about your glass frog. You're gonna type, you're at the bottom, you need to type sources, DK publishing, everything you need to know about frogs and other three creatures, pages 32, 33. And EL education, transparent wonder. You're gonna type that at the bottom of your essay. Where do I write that? So you're gonna find it, at, remember the one that Mrs. Harrison did for you, Ben? The one that Mrs. Harrison copied for you? The last page, it's, the, it's your last page before your glossary. The last page before your glossary. All right, Jensen, did you have a question? Okay. Um, I still don't know how to delete slides. Okay, did you get, do you have all three things in there? Do you have your essay? Do you have uh -huh. your applications and your pourquoi? Um, uh, pretty sure. Well, um, because you need all three of those. You shouldn't have any extra, you shouldn't really have extra slides. It, if you need to delete one. Oh, I want to delete the glossary. Oh, okay. So then just click on the glossary. Just click on it. And then um, hit delete your, or backspace on your computer. It's on the right, and then it'll go away. Or you can highlight it and go up to edit and say cut, and it'll get rid of it that way too. All right. Oh, Jensen, you're muted again. I just clicked the backspace. Okay. Yeah. You can just go ahead and cut. You click on it and hit cut, and it'll delete it for you. Or you can click on it and say slide, and it'll say delete slide. Any of those ways will work. All right, anybody else at home need my help? Let's see. Miss Haley, did you share your story? Did you share your book with me, Haley Booker? I'll do it right now. All right, no, that was Haley. Haley Calendar, I have yours. You're good. I just need Haley Booker's. So make sure Haley Booker does it. Hey, Miss Haley Calendar, did you get your poor quad? Haley Calendar. So. Hey, Haley, give me a thumbs up if you got your poor quad inside your book. I'm doing it right now. Perfect. Okay. Good. Okay, I'm going to walk away for just a minute. I'll be right back. So, don't anybody go anywhere? Uh oh, Ben disappeared and came back. Okay. All right. All right. And 
Whatever paint, which rod is yours, Lauren? You just put those pages. Is it your Amazon hot dog, right? So you just put page 2021, and then you're going to write EL Education, the Amazon. That's that puppy piece of paper. Okay? All right. Oh, that's a Miss Harrison. Astria, were you the one that needed my help? All right. I'm sorry it took me so long. Do we put like the water holding frog, uh, page 3637, um, like stuff at the bottom? Yes, the bottom of your essay. So when you, fit, you all, when you finish getting all the essay, the four paragraph essay, at the bottom, you're going to say sources. DK Publishing, everything you need to know about frogs and other slippery creatures, pages. And if you're water holding, you're just gonna say 36, 37. You don't have to retype water holding. You just go ahead and say those pages. And then you're gonna say in the next line, EL education, comma, all about the water holding frog. Okay. All right, so, and then it's, it should only be four lines, four lines total, all right? Shouldn't be, you don't need all of this, just yours. Yep. All right, anybody else who's on? Um, yes, Gavin. Unmute, my friend. There you go. This isn't really about um, the lesson, but I, 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 this morning, and a new baby chick hatched. Oh, how nice. Was that exciting? That's exciting. Yeah. All right. Very, uh, very sweet. Very sweet. Congratulations. You're, are you a, you're a chick parent now? Congratulations. <laughs> All right. 
Did you have any other questions, Gavin, or anything else you wanted to say to me? Oh, I was wondering if I could show it. Oh. I can't wait. If you could say that again, my friend. Show I was it. wondering if I yeah. We can't do that right now because that would be too distracting for our um for right in the middle of our lesson. Um, but let me um, work that out maybe with um, Mrs. Aubin or maybe we could figure out some time to do that. Okay. All right. Thanks for asking though. All right. Um, anybody else have a question before I have to run back to the, my other hands that are up? I want to make sure everybody's getting taken care of. Sorry, Mrs. Aubin. I know you're looking and I'm messing with it. All right. Isabella, you doing okay? Did you get everything copied over? Okay, Logan, did you get your, um, Logan, did you get your essay all done? Did you get your, okay, so guys, don't forget to go to you, don't forget to go to your table of contents and put your page numbers in, okay? Leo, did you do your table of contents yet? Table of contents, okay, you could work on your glossary a little if you wanted, if you got some time. All right, um, let's see. Um, yes. Haley, how's it going? Are you getting everything copied over? Haley Calendar and Haley Booker? You get it? Okay. If you don't want the glossary, you can get rid of that page. Here's the glossary. You're going to go up to here and you're going to say cut. And just go away. And then on the table of contents, you just get rid of that word. to move on. All right, so I need everybody to go ahead and open their workbook to page 131. Okay, let's see, it's on this thing here. So where it was there. Um, all right, let me see. 
Nope, sorry, 132. Nope, 135. Somewhere on my slide, it says page 135. All right, page 135 should look like this. It should have four boxes, each section. So the first one says scientific diagram. So my friends at home and my friends here, I want you to think about your um, either drawing, if you did it in person, if you did it in person, you have one, if you're at home, I don't know, some of you, Mrs. Monroe said some of you did your assignment with your um, frog, and uh, some of you did not. So I'm not sure um, which or which, but so you listen either way. So when you did your drawing, you just did the drawing of the frog, right? Or, and painted it. But we didn't put any parts on it that are scientific. So a scientific drawing also needs some very simple lines um, with some labels. Because when somebody looks at a frog, they might not know exactly, because this is your trading card, you are going to insert a couple of places that's that shows where on your frog are the important parts, okay? So a simple diagram has some lines and then just the very unique adaptations are labeled, all right? So labels are not a whole bunch of words. Labels are just, very, just the very most important words, right? They're not sentences, they're just key words. So what we're going to do Eventually, this is just your plan. Page 135 is your plan. Because we always do what first? We always plan before we jump into doing something for sure. So I'm going to show my friends who are um, at home what you're eventually going to do. So if you have your own drawing, we can import that into this spot. But my friends here, we're going to be doing the card on this one, the one you did your picture. But on my friends who wish to do it on virtually, who are at home, are going to have a blank paper. It's going to look like that to start with. All right, the trading card is going to look like that to start with. Yours is two sided in person. You have two sides. So this is where your picture will go, and then you will insert some lines that show. So I did the poison dart from. So I'm going to have different labels than you are, aren't I? So my thing. My thing that a frog has that are special are bright skin, rounded toes, and toxic skin, All right? Now, am I gonna put anything about eggs? No, no because I, my picture A doesn't have any eggs and that's more of a behavior than a physical adaptation, right? So I'm gonna show my friends at home eventually how to put these lines in and how to do this. But right now we're just planning, all right? We're just planning. So I want you right now on page 135 in the top left hand part, I want you to write in that box what you think you are going to label. All right, what are you going to label on your frog, on your picture? So they have to be your unique adaptations. All right, so if you're a glass frog, what are you probably gonna write? Transparent skin, make sure you spell it correctly. If you're an Amazon horn frog, what are you gonna probably write in that box? Haley Booker? Um, I, I don't have my trading card thingy. I understand, so you're gonna have to do yours virtually this week. You're gonna have to do it, I know. I, it's a bummer. So you'll have yours here if you make it back, um, but you can do yours virtually as well. Cole, what will you do if you're Amazon horn frog, do you think? You're a water holding frog, right? Yeah, I think I think uh trading frog. Ah, so we are gonna may have to maybe do yours virtually as well. That's okay. You're right, because you were gone that week, right? Yep. No worries. That's why we have two options, right? We're good. Max, what are we, what are you gonna put in that box? Amazon horn the horn, right? Horns. So write horns inside your box. If you're Amazon horn frog, you're going to probably point out the horns. What else might you put inside that box if you're Amazon horn frog? What else? The top left where it says scientific diagram. You're right. Everybody should be writing in that box right now. Everybody should be writing in that box. Top left corner. 
on page 135. You're not copying what's up here. These are just the, th these are just the requirements for the scientific drawing. So if you're an Amazon horn frog, could you also put brown and tan colors? Could you put big mouth? Now, think about your drawing. You're going to have to point to these things on your drawing, right? So uh, make sure that you choose some things you can actually point out because you're going to draw some lines on your picture and you're going to label it. All right. Give me a thumbs up when you have at least two, two items. You have to have at least two lines pointing something out about your frog. August, what, fro what kind of frog do you have? Glass frog. So transparent skin and then what else? Are you going to, do you have your workbook to page 135? That's what you should be working on right now. What else could you put? What else could um, we put for glass frog besides transparent skin? So these are, your, your, you're doing a scientific diagram. You're going to put a line to your picture. Is that something I can put in my, that I have in my picture that I'm going to be able to show? Your, no. So what else on their body can I put, August? Besides transparent skin. Rounded toes, right? Because they do what? They climb those trees. Here, so, okay, so everybody should have at least two written down. Can you hold it up so I can see that you have written inside that container, inside that box? All right, go ahead. Yep, page 135. Everybody should have two items. I don't have to be able to read them. I just need to see that they're in there. Two, at least two. Could you have three? Yes, but you need at least two. Two things. I guess. All right. All right. Now. All right. So the next thing are key facts. That's the next box down. All right, next box down. You need some facts. What is most important about your frog? So the plan does not have to have sentences, but we are going to have sentences when we actually write this on the back of your um, for frog or when you are typing inside. So let me show you what I did. Here's Mrs. Harrison's. Here's about my poison dart frog, right? So my key facts are poison dart frogs can be poison enough, poisonous enough to paralyze or even kill a predator. Wow. My other, my not, next key fact, poison dart frogs live in Central and South America. That's a fact, right? Not an opinion, a fact. Number three, they get their toxicity from mites it eats. The more mites it eats, the more poisonous it becomes. So that was one fact, but I actually had two sentences. Does that make sense? That so you I you could I could have made that two separate facts, or I but I put it together as one. Poison dart frogs lay their eggs on the undersides of leaves. That's unique, isn't it? Because where do more most frogs lay their eggs? Underwater, right? So that's a, these are all things that are unique about your frog. The mother frogs carry their tadpoles to water after they hatch. So I need you to come up with five things that's interesting about your frog and jot some notes inside that box to show that you, so that you're, when you're read, when you get your actual frog card, or if you're, when you're actually on this page, my friends, you will have some facts. So let's go back up to this one. Don't do more than five. In fact, if you even have, I, I'll go with four or four or five, okay? I'll let you go four or five, but at least four. Write down right now, some interesting facts. Where it lives, what it eats, what it, you could put, if you're a water holding frog, you could say people used to use them to get water, Aborigines, okay? So you can put five, five interesting facts inside that box. So you can use this information. You could tell where in the world the frog is, lives. 
You can tell me that it lives in the canopy if you're the glass frog. Mr. I'm just ready. Five facts, five things could include where they live. You can include a little bit about their adaptations. So glass frog, you could say something about they're actually more transparent from underneath, right? If you're Amazon horn frog, you could say it has no predators. You could say if you're water holding frog, Aborigines used to use it for water. So five, four or five facts. Jot some ideas in that box. Four to five ideas. You don't have to write complete sentences now, but you need to have those ideas before you write them on your card. Four to five ideas. You could say where it's from, where it lives, what its adaptations are. I'll show you Mrs. Harrison's again, so you can get an idea. I included five facts that may, that showed how interesting my guy is. Which one are you? No predators. As you have prey, because that's how they attack their food, right? So predators. You're writing in five facts into this page right here. Sorry, this page right here. Key facts, five key facts, five key facts. Miss Elena. Can we have more than five? No more than five, because you know why? There's no room on this little card, Miss Elena. There's no room on this little card. There's, there's only, it's only the back side, and we still have to talk about the scoring, which we'll do tomorrow. Get your five facts. Five facts. Need one more. All right. All right, get five, get five ideas down. Yes, Ms. Cerny. You can have four. Yes, I said you could have four or five. That's fine. Less than four, and it's not much of a trading card with, you know, your the idea is to the idea is to be teaching, right? About our frogs. So we don't want less. We want more. Oh, I have no idea what just happened. Okay, there it is back. All right. Okay, you need at least five facts to go on your trading card. My friends at home, show me on your fingers how many you have written so far. All right. Jensen, thank you for three. You need one more at least. Gavin, how many facts do you have? How many facts do you have written so far on your page 135? Okay, good job. Leo, good job. Haley, good for Lou, unless you want one more. All right, Isabella, okay. Okay, you need some more. That's okay. Size. Yep. Any of your adaptations. No, it doesn't. It could be where they live. It could be what their ad physical adaptations, what they look like. Their their big mouth if you're an Amazon horn frog. Your sizes. Any facts you want to include. All right. Not more than five because you have this little tiny place on the back of your card that you have to write them. And that's not all. There's more that goes on the back than just that. All right, this is what I want to leave you with. You're not doing anything yet, Miss Sunny, but I want you to get, I want you to think before tomorrow, okay? So you're going to be scoring your frog on some certain categories. So you're not doing this now, but I want you to think about it because it took Mrs. Harrison a little while to think about the point system she's going to use. So out of five points, it's kind of like fist to five kind of idea, okay? So you're, there are five key categories that you are going to think about. You're not actually going to do this yet. You're going to do this tomorrow. But I want you to think about on a scale from one, one to five, color. Think about the color of your frog. My, color, my frog is super colorful, so I give it a five, right? It's bright red, bright blue, bright green, you know, like it's bright, right? So I get five. If I was just, if I was a wood frog 
and, and I'm giving the color, I'd probably get a one, right? Because what remember wood frogs are just brown. That's not very interesting. So that's its color. Size. If you're big, you get more points. If you're small, you get less points. So is a is a poison dart frog small? Yes. So I gave myself a one because I'm tiny. Camouflage. If you're really good at camouflaging, you get a five. If you are not good at, at camouflaging, you are. Am I? Can I camouflage? Is a poison dart frog camouflage? No. So I get a one. Now wait a minute. Are there other scores? Can you give yourself a two? Yes. Can you give yourself a three? Yes. Can you give yourself a four? Yes. You can't go higher than five. It's one to five. Okay. And the last category is poison. Well, I am poisonous, so I get a five. If you are not poisonous at all, you get a one. We're going to go with one as our lowest amount, okay? So not even zero, just a one. All right? So think about those categories because tomorrow I'm going to ask you to score yourself and your frog on those parts, okay? So that's what I, so think about it. Or am I a two? Am I a three? Am I, we have to be honest and you have to be able to justify it, okay? You have to be able to prove it. Because if I said size, I said, I'm a five and I'm playing the game, the person who's the Amazon horn frog is gonna be like, mm, you're tiny, you're not a five. I, I have to be able to justify my reasoning about my number, okay? All right, that is it for today, my friends. Um, Mrs. Aubin, are we meeting on your link for, yes, so Astria, um, yep, um, Astria, um, and um, let's see, is it, um, Charlie, nope, not Charlie, so Astria, you're going to go to Mrs. Aubin's for 1245, okay, because we're going to do our Dr. Seuss celebration instead of OG today, so you're going to, so come to Mrs. Aubin at 1245, all right, okay, all right, my friends. Well, um, I will see you um, later today. All right. Thanks for all your hard work. All right. Bye.